Every heat pump system should have an electrical backup heat kit. It's uh, just a metal wire strip that glows red hot and adds backup heat. So our electric heat strips, also called our auxiliary backup heat for a heat pump system, uh, they come on when the day's too cold uh, and in the heat pump isn't keeping up or something has gone on with the heat pump and it's shut down and so it comes on as like an emergency backup heat or if it's in defrost. But um, today I'm gonna show you how to check it. So we're gonna take an amp draw on the heat kit. I'll show you exactly where to hook up for that and make sure that our heat kit is actually working as it should, all right? So first of all, our data tag should have a sticker on it, a heat kit sticker. And we have the model circled over here and then along with that, the general size. Our breaker size is 35, our max breaker. That lets me know pretty quick without having to decipher the model that we're dealing with a 5K heater. It's generally the breaker size for our 5K. Uh, our heat kits are gonna come in a few common sizes in residential backup heat kits. Uh, the common ones, five, eight, and 10K with slight variations, but that's typically your most common. So let's get straight to it. First off, I'm gonna take my panel off and look at all these wires. Man, what a lot of wires. Which one do I need to actually measure from? When I'm measuring a heat kit, I'm gonna actually go to my main incoming power. I have my two power lines that come into the system because I know the heat kit is gonna be the largest amp pulling device on this system. And I'm gonna loop that wire. That's probably the easiest wire to get to. I'm showing you this in the middle of a warm day, so I have to jumper this out instead of turn it on. I'm gonna jumper out W, bring my backup heat on. Okay, so now on our main power, I have 18.6 amps on my main power line. Now, another place I could check is right on the heat kit itself. We have a wire coming right off of the heat kit back here. So I can check on that um, and I get just the electric heat strip uh, power. And so the other two amps were my blower motor when I check total. But most of the time I'm coming in here just to verify is it running or not running and checking main power is great. Another reason to check main power is because if I have a larger heat kit like this, this is a 10K. And I'm used to just coming straight in and checking right on the heat kit. I might only get half of my heat kit. I would be getting just 5K of this 10K heat kit. 5K on this side, 5K on this side. But if I check total power back here, then I'll get the full amps of my heat kit. So total power is the easiest place to check. When you have this open, typically I'm holding the panel in place so I get my blower running at its normal amps with my panel in place. Another trick is to put your panel back on and come over here. This would be like my disconnect box or breaker panel nearby. You could also check main amps there. So I can come over here, put my meter on and see I have 18 amps. And so I know that my 5K heater is working. So there's a couple tricks for checking it. I would say this, if you are always testing straight at these connection pieces, they can be hard to get to. And it can be hard to get your meter out. And sometimes you can pull your meter and accidentally pull these prongs off. If they're loose, you can bump something loose in here coming in. So another good reason to actually check at main incoming power for my heat kit amps. All right, so I have my three um, common sizes laid out for you here. This is a 5K, and you can see as I go larger to an 8K, we just have more um, coils, heat coils, and these will glow bright red, and then the blower blows across them and um, picks up the heat. The air picks up the heat and blows it into the house. And then we have a 10K. So as you can see, the 10K is just a little bit larger than our 8K. On the back side of these things, we have our safeties and our various relays. It'll be different for different types 
of heat kits, different models, different brands. Uh, what I was gonna show you now is just taking a resistance measurement across your heat kits to see if we have an open or a closed path. If these things have been damaged, maybe a piece will melt and break. And if power doesn't have a continuous path all the way through, they're not gonna glow red, they're not gonna get hot, they're not gonna be working. So in this 10K example, all it would take is for one of these to be snapped, broken, maybe they rubbed out on metal and they got really hot, they arced and they broke, or something fell into the um, plenum and actually hit the top of it. All these things could happen, vibration. So uh, one way to verify if our coils are still good is to take a resistance measurement across the coils. So if you're looking into a unit, you're gonna see this backside here. And this ceramic piece right here is insulating the metal prongs that come out of our coils. Let me flip it over and you can see the metal comes straight down into those insulators. And then it comes out in prongs and this is how our 240, um, 208, 230 feeds in through here. So I will switch my meter over to ohms. Now I'm on ohms and I'm gonna measure across this to see if I have a path. If this is broken, then my meter is gonna tell me OL. I'm not actually gonna have a path. If I do have a path, it's gonna give me a resistance reading. This resistance reading, um, you can actually take that and do the math, take your voltage, the resistance, uh, do Ohm's law, and you can figure out what amp draw you're gonna have on this heat kit. I mean, it's not exact, but it gets you close enough to guess the size of the heat kit if you need to. So our different heat kits are gonna give us different resistance measurements. And that will determine how much amp draw they're gonna pull, how much heat they're putting off. So this 5K is giving me 11.4. And then over here on our 10K or 8K, we have a little bit more, but if you look at this, our 8K is the combination of two different coils. And then we have our 10, and it's the combination of this coil and this coil both running together that give us our actual 10. So to verify, once again, just verifying if it's a failed heat kit coil or not, I can take the ohms measurement across the coil. And if it's closed path and I get a normal resistance, it's good. If it's an open path, it'll read like this on the meter, OL. And that means something's broken in here. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast, available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications, available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.